Welcome to Crime Stoppers. I'm your host, Chip Brown. Heartland Crime Stoppers is a community-based program designed to help law enforcement solve crime by providing a way for the public to phone in tips anonymously and receive cash rewards of up to $3,000 for information that leads to an arrest, the recovery of stolen property, or the recovery of illegal drugs. Heartland Crime Stoppers is funded through the State of Florida Office of the Attorney General Crime Stoppers Trust Fund and through donations from the community. Citizens and local businesses make Crime Stoppers work. Recently, the city of Lakin introduced Ruben Garcia as chief of police, taking over for Larry Giddens, who announced his retirement in January. Chief Garcia has 32 years of law enforcement experience with the Lakin Police Department. He joined the organization in April of 1987 after serving four years with the 2nd Marine Division of the United States Marine Corps. Chief Garcia also served as one of the agency's three assistant chiefs for the past three years. Chief Garcia, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Now, it has been a long journey. Did you ever uh, foresee as a student at Lake Gibson High School that uh, you would be sitting as the top chair there on the third floor of the Lake and Police Department? Uh, no, sir, I didn't. I've just had a lot of uh, wonderful opportunities that's allowed me to get there. Yeah. Now, you were raised here in, in Lakeland. You're a, a North Lakeland. Yes, sir. I uh, graduated from Lake Gibson High School and uh, raised in North Lakeland pretty much my whole life. Yeah, so you have a good understanding of what goes on here in our community, which is certainly uh, helpful uh, in your line of work. Yes, sir. Uh, very familiar with the city. Um, and after working in, in the city for 32 years, I'm pretty well versed in the areas beyond North Lakeland. Had an opportunity to learn South Lakeland as well. Absolutely. Now, uh, when you started just like I did at LPD, you started on the midnight shift, you know, shining shining doors and shaking doors and uh, getting out, walking around. And uh, it's uh, a lot has changed since those early days, hasn't it? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there's a lot of technology has come along that helps us greatly, but it uh, also keeps us on our toes too. We, we have to be a little bit uh, quicker, a little more accurate, a little faster in our information that we deliver because the uh, volume of information uh, coming out is uh, many more times over what it was when I started. Yeah, the stuff that you can just gain from you know, the computer search and the, the automated backgrounds and the stuff used to be, it was all hand hand looked up, you know, if you will, and the old Rolodex files that would just roll and uh, all the manual stuff. And now that technology uh, is such an asset to the officers on the street for safety and for other reasons. They can pull up an address and know if they've been there before, they've had issues there before, you know immediately, basically, uh, what you're getting into much more than we did when we started. Absolutely. It, it just enhances that rolling office that they're in every day out in the field. Uh, a lot of stuff they would have to call back to headquarters for now is at their fingertips so they can respond and provide better customer service out in the field. It uh, goes beyond that though. We have a drone program now so we're using that to get eyes up higher than we ever could before. So a lot of different technologies that also allows us to network with all the, all the other criminal justice agencies around the county. So uh, a lot of very good tools in the technology field that helps us in law enforcement nowadays. Yeah. Now, when you started with Lakeland, you uh, uh, did a lot of different jobs. And uh, I, I, I've kidded you earlier about all those years you did drugs. And of course, that was while you were in, you know, working drugs on the street and actually the high intensity drug trafficking force and the feds. and. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of that background. It was an opportunity that I had early on in my career, and uh, then I got to return again as a supervisor to that same unit. But uh, it started out locally working street level drugs. I had an opportunity to spend some time with the uh, DEA task force out of Tampa, as well as our HIDA task force uh, countywide. So it, it gives you an opportunity to um, locate and attempt to remove some of the uh, criminal element within our, side, our society mm -hmm. that uh, it's not just related to the drug problem, but obviously that goes out into burglaries and robberies and stuff to fuel that drug habit. So it gives you an opportunity to really stem some of the crime that's occurring in our community by working in the drug unit. Yeah, it seems like the vast majority of crimes that are committed all relate back to either being addicted to drugs, to trying to sell stuff, you know, to, to get drugs. Uh, it's just, uh, it really is a huge problem. Yes, sir. I, I would say uh, the majority of crimes, other than a true heat of the moment crime, a passion type crime, 
has some nexus back to drug use or drug sales uh, more times than not in our communities. Now, when you were in that unit, you actually had uh, one of the canines, uh, we call them sniffers, you know, that actually was a drug detection dog. Uh, yes, sir. I had an opportunity to work a Labrador retriever uh, named Ranger. And uh, Ranger was very astute at uh, finding hidden uh, loads of drugs uh, throughout the city. Now, recently, y'all just sponsored the regional canine trials here in Lakeland. Uh, yes, sir. The, our canine unit sponsored the event along with the USPCA. Uh, a lot of behind the scene work that our guys put forth before the trials ever got here. And along with hosting an outstanding competition and certification for canine handlers throughout the region, they were also able to secure the top team as well as the second place team. So our eight dogs finished one through eight uh, in regards to the four man, two four man teams. That uh, shows just such, so much dedication and hard work uh, for these officers to, to do that. It, uh, because besides their normal duties, they spend a lot of time on their own working these dogs and caring for them because they, they live with them, they're part of the family. Yes, sir, they go home with them every day. Uh, it's not a nine to five job for them. They, that dog lives with them, he's part of their family. So they, they care for the dog 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, uh, we didn't go talk about it much, but uh, your time in the Marine Corps, uh, what, what were you doing in the Marine Corps those four years? Uh, the majority of my time was spent with the deployed force out of uh, North Carolina, and we deployed out into the Mediterranean where we spent some time over in the Middle East. Yeah, I know a lot of that stuff is probably can't talk about, but uh, did, I, there again, I just can imagine how that actually prepared you for what you're doing today. It, uh, it gives you a good opportunity to uh, learn different cultures and learn a respect and appreciation for different cultures. Now I know that uh, since you were, uh, were named uh, chief that you are putting an emphasis back on community oriented policing. Absolutely. Uh, one of our big drives is to work some of our ongoing uh, problems at the root cause of those problems so we're not responding time and time again out to the same location. We want to try to find out what's really causing that and not just treating the symptoms of what's going on there, but actually find out what the problem is and see between us and our other partners uh, what we can do to solve that problem and uh, make that community better by taking that particular problem out of the community. Now, when this program originally started, uh, Lecton had it for a while and you were actually on that from the ground level. I had one of the opportunities to be one of the sergeants in the unit as it uh, was developing in Lakeland, so I had a good appreciation for what the men and women could do, uh, given the opportunity to be taken out of that uh, 911 system mm -hmm. to where they have a little free time to where they can go out and work with residents and other stakeholders in the community to uh, solve some ongoing nagging issues that, uh, quite frankly, brings down the quality of life of a neighborhood. Yeah, and that's so important to not just treat the, I guess, the results of the problem, but try to correct the problem to start with and uh, those problems tend to, to, to lessen and hopefully even go away. Yes, sir, that, that's the hope, that we're, we're able to stop them at their root cause, stop them in their infancy before they get to be a huge problem. And um, it, there's a lot of different elements to that, not just working in the neighborhoods, but working in the schools as well. Our school resource officers are nothing more than community police officers. They just happen to be stationed in a school. Their community becomes the school. And they, they work with those teachers and students to try to improve the quality of life in that school. And plus just the exposure of and, and talking to the people, talking to the students on a daily basis, uh, you build a relationship with them where they actually can, can trust you, they can talk about issues, uh, and not just you know call you when there's an emergency, they can actually call you with other issues and just relate on a one-to-one -one level. Uh, absolutely, and that's the overarching goal is, is to build that team bigger, uh, that team that's trying to make the city better. If we just try to do it with the 240-something police officers we have, we'll be nowhere near as successful as, as if we do it with the 106,000 residents we have. So if we're all on the same team, we're certainly going to bring it home for a win. Yeah, and that uh, just has so much to offer. Um, it's, you know, it's, I guess everything goes full cycle. It's like the old days of the beat cop, you know, and then we evolved into cars and patrolling neighborhoods, and you kind of lose that personal contact, and it's just, vital to your whole mission. Yes, sir. Uh, 
very important that our residents don't just see a police car, but they see a police officer and that they have a personal connection with that police officer that works their area. So uh, they're not afraid to come forward and, and they know that information will be held in good trust and used for the proper reasons to solve crime and, and increase the quality of life in the neighborhoods. Chief Garcia, I'm going to ask you to stick around for a minute for the second half of our show. Yes, sir. I'll be glad to. Crimestoppers provides a way for local law enforcement to receive information on crimes while keeping the people providing that information anonymous. These efforts increase tips, which in turn solve more crimes and identify criminals in our community. Here are a look at some of our most recent cases. Mark Torres of 305 Eric Lane in Kissimmee was in the Haines City Walmart on January 13th and seen on surveillance footage taking three Samsung televisions and placing them into a shopping cart. Torres, 22, passed all points of sale and left in a blue minivan. He is 5'9 and weighs 170 pounds. Torres is out on a pre-trial release for a February 17th arrest for grand theft of over $300 among other charges. Do you know where Robert Lubin is? He has a warrant for failure to appear on sexual battery charges. Robert Lubin is a black male born on August 10th, 1988. He's five foot 10 inches tall and 178 pounds. His last known address was in Haines City he is believed to be on the East Coast in the Daytona Beach area. From September 4th, 2018 through October 1st, 2018, this unknown female utilized the victim's identity to open an account with First Tech Federal Credit Union and obtain a $40,000 line of credit. The female used the fraudulent credit card to make purchases totaling $40,000 at Publix, Target, and Winn-Dixie stores throughout Hillsborough, Pasco, and Polk counties. The suspect is described as a black female, 18 to 30 years of age, and possibly pregnant. Friday, February 8th, a number of car burglaries occurred in the Lakeland area of Odom Road and Leland Road. Pictured is the suspect, which we hope someone will be able to recognize. We've been having a rash of these lately, so please remember to lock your car door. These two used a stolen debit card to make purchases at the Publix at 2040 Shepherd Road in Mulberry. It happened on a Wednesday, that's January 30, 2019, around 251. The suspects used the victim's mid-Florida bank card and then attempted to use multiple cards, which were declined. The victim did not recognize the suspects, but we're hoping that you might. Felony warrant has been obtained for the arrest of 29-year-old Jabril Scurry. The last known address was Kerry Boulevard of Winter Haven after he failed to return a vehicle to Central Buick GMC dealership in Winter Haven. These suspects went to Walmart at 7450 Cypress Gardens Boulevard on February 11th and filled a couple of buggies. They hung around the produce area near the exit until nobody was looking. And then, as you can see, ran out without paying for the items in their buggies. The two men shown are suspects in a recent vehicle burglary that took place at Lake Crago Park. A credit card stolen from the vehicle was used at multiple locations throughout Lakeland. The suspects were last seen driving a black Infinity car. 
on January 31st between 9.22 a.m. and 11 a.m., the suspect removed a package that was delivered and placed on front of the porch of a residence on Dane Court. The package contained 100 sweatband tank tops valued at approximately $1,000. The suspect is described as a tall, slender white male in his late 20s, early 30s, short dark hair wearing a blue t-shirt, blue shorts, and gray shoes. The vehicle appears to be an older model blue Jeep Cherokee with a front black aftermarket grill. On January 26, 2019, at 845 in the morning, this suspect stole a TV and a Roku stick from the Walmart in Winterhaven. We're hoping that you can identify her. A home on Mandolin Court in Winterhaven was burglarized by the two pictured individuals on January 25, 2019, around 1.05 p.m. Now, here's the funny thing. On January 18, 2019, someone that looks very similar to the guy with the beard used a stolen credit card at Walmart in Auburndale and left in the truck that is pictured. If you have any information on any of the cases you've just seen or any information on an unsolved crime, please contact Heartland Crime Stoppers and leave an anonymous tip. The toll-free tip line is 1-800-226-TIPS. That's 8477. You can also leave an anonymous web tip by going to www.heartlandcrimestoppers.com and click on the Give a Tip tab or by going to www.p3tips.com. Don't forget, you can download our free P3 Tips app on your smart device. Whichever way you choose to leave a tip, you will remain 100% anonymous. If your tip results in an arrest, the recovery of stolen property, or the recovery of illegal drugs, you could be eligible for a cash reward of up to $3,000. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers. I'm your host, Chip Brown. Join us today in the studio is Chief Ruben Garcia, the newly named police chief for the city of Lakeland. Now, Ruben, we were talking a little bit earlier about the, uh, the importance of having the officers in the schools. Uh, the new laws in the state of Florida have really made an impact on not only your agency, but throughout the state. Uh, yes, sir. It's uh, created some uh, challenges for us to uh, fill the schools to the uh, staffing levels that they have to be. Uh, we have to keep officers in the school the whole time the schools are open. So those officers, once they're on their property, they stay there the whole day. So that they have to take lunch on the school grounds. They have to uh, be there the whole day other than if they get called away from court or they have an illness. And then we have to backfill from other officers uh, that would normally be assigned to other jobs like uh, traffic or patrol would have to go backfill for those officers. So it's uh, hugely important to keep those schools protected. So we're uh, certainly on board with that, but it has uh, become taxing to some of our other units to, to keep the uh, schools filled to the staffing levels that we have to. Yeah, there are just so many priorities and unfortunately this is the time in our lives where uh, you know, we have people that seem to, to, to prey on, on our, our most uh, important resource, you know, the kids in the schools, and uh, it is highly important, and I know you're a big supporter of that. Uh, yes, sir, absolutely. We uh, work with the school board, uh, work with Safe Schools program uh, daily through the Sheriff's Office to uh, make sure we're providing the best security we can for all the children, uh, not just in Lakeland, but uh, throughout the whole county. Yeah, it, uh, like I say, it's so important, and there's so much more work that needs to be done, but this is certainly a, a good start in, in that direction. There are you know, some, some areas, I would say, still needs maybe some tweaking, but uh, at least ways of addressing it and working on the right path. Yes, sir. Uh, of course, law enforcement is just one of the components. Uh, the teachers are a huge part of it, the administrators, as well as the mental health community, uh, all trying to find 
a way to ensure that a child in crisis uh, does not have an episode at one of the schools. Yeah, I'm sure you remember, uh, as I do, uh, back in the day when they started phasing out, you know, some of these mental health hospitals uh, where, where people were able to go and, and, and get treatment. Uh, as those phased out, you know, those people were released, came back into the community, uh, and unfortunately, many times ended up back in your lap in law enforcement. Yes, sir. That, that's one of our uh, daily partners that we work with is the folks in the mental health business. Uh, we run across a good amount of folks that are in crisis at one level or another and that uh, need services from our mental health community. So, so they are a vital daily partner that we work with. Uh, obviously in the way that your officers are trained to, to, to deal with these people themselves has changed from over the years, I'm sure. Uh, yes, sir. That's uh, quite extensive um, critical incident uh, training that our officers receive now. Uh, not just the Lakeland officers, but that's a countywide initiative to uh, have all of our officers trained in uh, dealing with folks that are in a crisis. Like I say, it's just it's so difficult because these, these people are, are having delusions or, or just these mental illnesses that are so, so hard to, to crack and you want to not deprive them of, of, of their rights, but at the same time we have to balance that with protecting not only, you know, the kids in the school, but, you know, other business in the community and people on the street corners, you know, driving past. Yes, sir, that's absolutely right. We have to uh, protect everyone's uh, rights, but uh, still bearing in mind the responsibility that everyone has to be safe and productive citizens as well. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about, about tips, you know, Crime Stoppers tips. I know that we, uh, we send you as, as the largest city uh, here than the Polk Highlands and Hardy County that we cover. Uh, we send you guys a, a good amount of tips, a lot of drug tips, and uh, just how, how do you, I mean, I'm, how do they help you? Let me just ask you that so our listeners can, can hear it. From they you. are often the, that little piece of the puzzle that was missing for us. Uh, a lot of tips that come in, we already have detectives working on the uh, particular problem, but they may add a little bit of information that will help crack that case. Uh, they, they may have a good idea of what's going on there, but they may not have enough to uh, establish probable cause to make an arrest or to search the home. So those pieces of information from our local tipsters help uh, support that information, give them additional leads that they can follow up on and further their case. So it's uh, critical that the citizens keep calling those tips in. Yeah, we certainly appreciate all the, the people that, that do take the time to, to call us. Like I say, they stay anonymous. Uh, and then once you verify that that tip resulted in an arrest, the recovery of stolen property or the recovery of illegal drugs, uh, then that person is authorized for a cash reward. So. Yes, it's uh, the drug business, particularly the uh, street level drug business or the lower level uh, drug business is a very rapid evolving uh, situation. So a lot of times the uh, tips that we get in, our officers have already have been to that residence, but that doesn't mean it will not be a reoccurring problem as we work to solve the root cause of the problem. It always helps for the neighbors to keep us informed of what's going on. Even if we've been there, if the situation starts again, we'd certainly want them to call us back and keep, keep in touch with us, e even though anonymously. Certainly. Now, uh, with your extensive background in working drug cases, uh, we frequently get, get uh, follow-up you know, information to Crime Stoppers on people that they left a tip. You know, say they leave a tip on, on Monday uh, and they'll get back with us on Thursday and want to know if anything has happened. Uh, maybe you can, maybe without going into too much detail, you know, to jeopardize any uh, investigative techniques, but uh, drug cases can take a long time. Yes, and oftentimes uh, they'll end in a search warrant on that level of tips that come in. But that's a huge responsibility that the officers have when they go to the court to ask for a search warrant. They're, they're asking to go contrary to the Fourth Amendment, so they, they certainly uh, want to have all the information and have that information proper and have enough information to support uh, making an application for a search warrant. So that does take time and that's not an overnight process most times. Yeah. So it will certainly, you, you could expect a couple of weeks for an investigation to unfold at that level. Yeah, and, and frequently I've seen them last months and uh, sometimes uh, even a year. Yes, yes, the more complex the 
organization they're investigating, the longer it would take to build a proper case. And I know that uh, the state attorney certainly has its guidelines and, and it's what it needs, you know, to be able to, to go and get the judge to, to sign the search warrant. You know, there's, there's a lot of probable cause. You have to lay a good, a good fa you know, found foundation for that. You just can't say, well, we've got a tip that uh, the house, you know, at, uh, on Main Street is, is doing drugs. You can't go in and kick down the door and, and search the house. Absolutely. Uh, our intake attorneys through the state attorney's office, they're, they're every step of the way for our detectives. Anytime they have a question, they're able to reach out to them. And they actually never make application to a judge for a search warrant without first going through the state attorney's office and having them review the work before it's offered to the judge for their approval. Now that, uh, that teamwork that you have, you know, not only with the state attorney, but with all the agencies and especially the state attorney is, is really vital to, to your, your operation. Absolutely. It's, uh, crime has never helped one jurisdiction. So we certainly have to be daily partners with our sheriff's office, uh, with our other municipal police officers, our police agencies. We, we have a meeting every month, the uh, Polk County Chiefs meeting, where all the chiefs and the command staff from the different agencies as well as the sheriff and his command staff come together and talk about emerging trends and problems w within the county. But uh, we have a mutual aid agreement throughout the county, so there's not an agency here that's not a phone call away from any other agency that needs help, and that would include the state attorney as well. There's a, a great working relationship uh, throughout the county with all our partners. Now, you have, speaking of the state attorney, you have a, what, is a, a quarterly meeting with the state attorney and his staff? Yes, sir, we also have a quarterly meeting just with the state attorney, but the state attorney also attends the uh, Polk Chiefs meeting as well. So we uh, kind of have a couple of opportunities as well as our daily contact per cases. Yeah, and as, as you're finding out, I'm sure it is, it is so hard to get out of the office with all that goes on, just the, uh, of, of running an agency and the, the budget and the issues. It's, it's hard to get out, and even though you know that support's there, it's still good to be able to once a month to go in and just have a cup of coffee and, and talk to these other agencies, the chiefs, their staff, you know, uh, the medical examiner I know was at these meetings, the state attorneys at these meetings. Uh, it, it's, it really is just a, a kind of a unique situation, I think. Yes, we're uh, extremely lucky, uh, not just to work in the criminal justice system here, but to be a resident of this county. It, it is well protected and you got great teams from every jurisdiction here uh, working together for a common goal. Well, Chief Garcia, it's, it's so nice to come. And be before we close, I wanted to just ask you if you remember one time uh, laughing at me years ago when uh, I ended up getting clotheslined in a, in a bloody nose. I think you remember that, don't you? Uh, I remember having a great role model <laughs> as a patrol sergeant that uh, would always catch his man when they ran from him, whether a clothesline was involved or not. Yeah, I remember uh, as uh, I was picking myself up off the ground after getting the clothesline right across here with the eye and had cut my nose. That uh, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of good memories, uh, a lot of hard work, uh, and just appreciate you know the hard work that you've done over the years because I have seen the hard work that that mm -hmm. you've done and uh, well deserving. And I'm sure that uh, you do an excellent job as a chief of Lakeland. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for having us today. For more information, you can check out the Lakeland Police Department at www.lakelandgov.net or follow them on Facebook at Lakeland PD. That's going to do it for this edition of Crime Stoppers. Keep in mind, Heartland Crime Stoppers is an organization that helps law enforcement solve crimes through anonymous tips and monetary rewards. For more information, you can check us out on the web at heartlandcrimestoppers.com or follow us on Facebook at Heartland Crime Stoppers Florida. Until next time, keep in mind, it's a crime, and you can help make sure that they don't get away with it.